I'm about to say two words, two words that strike fear into the heart of so many, many painters. Oil paints. Okay, well, now that uh, about 95% of people have clicked off the video, uh, we can get into uh, what is actually going on. This lovely model comes from RNE Studios, their JRPG line. Great model, absolutely loved it. Not any real problems with it, a little bit of gap filling, but this was a present, so I wanted it to be really tight. Only problem I had, it was a non-supported model, so I had to go through and do the supports, and these wings were a beast to support. So on to the dry brushing, oil paints exact same method that you use with acrylics. No difference whatsoever, except the paint is going to stay slightly wet. So if you know how to dry brush with acrylics, this is no great secret or anything. I primed with white because I wanted the core to look like that's where the heat, where the light was coming from. And so I just went darker as it went out with a natural uh, the way that you would naturally do flames. I uh, went from white to yellow to red and then black on the very, very tips. And you will get zero chalkiness with this method. It will be beautiful and smooth. It is super duper easy. If I did this with acrylics, this would have been a ton of work. It probably would have taken me the amount of time to do the entire project just to do the bird. Uh, I finished this entire Phoenix tail, everything included, uh, paint-wise in probably three to four hours. Um, all I would do is just take the, a small brush um, and smooth everything out after I'd done the initial layer and then after everything was all dry brushed I just went in with individual colors uh, with a small brush just to punch up the contrast. Super duper easy, buttery smooth blends. I can't recommend this enough. It, it, if you want to give oils a try, but you're afraid about how they work, try this first and you will not be disappointed. Like I said, I just wanted to give saturation to each of the colors so I just kind of went through right in the middle and just did a little dab and then blended it right back out and then I wanted this to have a little bit of a background this was a uh, Christmas present so I went in and just did a real quick generic uh, standy for the back uh, I did end up coming back and punching this up just a little bit um, to give it a little bit more visual interest. But again, this is oil paint, so you can just blend all day and get it as smooth and radiated as you want. And then cut a little piece of wood as a base. Give this kind of a volcano crater kind of look that the, that the phoenix is emerging out of. And this is the first time I've done a base this involved. This first time I've kind of really done anything like this. And I've watched a ton of videos over the years. So I had a good idea of how I wanted to execute this particular project. And just gave the normal method for cutting out kind of a, a general rock face back and forth, and then needed to add it in a bit of the crater. So cut that out. Just did it layer by layer, took my time. Uh, so I didn't take out too much. Um, you know, you can always remove more, but you can't really put an amount back. And then the old tin foil, roughing it up, giving it some texture. Just attached it with some PVA glue. And then 
and started marking out where it was going to need to be mounted. And then I wanted to, the rock to look like it was melted because this is going to be lava and everything. So I took my wood burner and skated it around on all the parts where the lava was going to be pouring out just to give it that obvious melted look. Worked great. Based the rock, uh, you know, black with some Mod Podge to seal it up and then spotted it in with some yellow and some orange and some red. And to do the lava that was pouring out, I did some hot glue, beads of hot glue running down. I knew it was gonna be transparent, so I used that as a basis, also as a dam to help stop the next step from pouring out, which was mixed success took uh, some plastic from a milk carton, used it to shore up the backside, and just attached it with some hot glue to make sure that the liquid wasn't gonna run out the back. And then I wanted the liquid, of course, to be transparent so you could see the paint underneath, so used yellow and red inks. I didn't have an orange, so just made my own and then used Vallejo water texture. Uh, I've used this quite a bit before on different projects so I knew how it would behave and how much it would shrink and everything because this stuff does sh shrink quite a bit. And I had the thought I, I wanted some lava bubbles and didn't really have anything, and then it occurred to me, googly eyes, the top of googly eyes. So if you want to do bubbles for your bases, and of course, <laughs> despite how much prep I did, uh, I still had a leak. It ended up coming out from underneath uh, one of the glue, hot glue pieces uh, on the side, but I shorted it up and it worked out all right. But yeah, tops of googly eyes, swamps or lava bubbles, Awesome. And then I just took some packaging, uh, hit it with a heat gun real quick to kind of bend it so it'd stay in shape, uh, laid it in for some splashes to give it some movement on the base. And then this time I used the yellow and red again, but I used more red. And then the Scenics Waves. Mixed all up, that all up real good. Took a while, did not want to mix with the inks at first, but it eventually took, and then just dab that on. Also helped hold all that stuff in place. And then took a Q-tip and a makeup sponge and just kind of teased it once it was a little dry, uh, just to pull it up. And use some yellow and red inks just to give it a little more punch and depth onto the lava flow. Painted the wood black so your attention would be on the colorful parts. Then I thought it was looking a little dull on the lava flow so I came in with some gloss Mod Podge and did a real thin coat on top of that just to make it look like it was hot and runny. And then hit the other parts. I got a little overboard with uh, the red uh, wave texture. So I came back with some yellow ink and just kind of dabbed it around so it would go into all of the hollows. So you'd see the so you'd see the heat on the center places. And yeah, it was just on to attaching the main part and attaching the back onto it. This project was lots of fun. I learned a lot of things and have a method that I'm going to use quite a bit. If you haven't already, appease the small gods of the algorithm. 
do the like, the subscribe if you want to, but most of all, just tell somebody about it. If you thought this was useful, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, just passing along by word of mouth. So, thank you, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.